Hey everybody, welcome back to Movies with Mia. If you're new to the channel, hello. I'm Mia Tiffany, and here we are watching the greatest classic films throughout history. Today we are finishing our Epic Scores series with part one of the epic film, Dr. Zhivago. Before we get started, I would like to shout out my Golden Oscar patrons. Guys, thank you so much for your continuous support of the channel. And if you're interested in becoming an exclusive VIP Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. Dr. Zhivago was released in 1965, directed by David Lean, with music by Maurice Jarre, starring Omar Sharif, Geraldine Chaplin, Julie Christie, and Tom Courtney, with other notable performances by Alec Guinness, Siobhan McKenna, Ralph Richardson, Rod Steiger, and Rita Tushingham. All right, guys, at this point, we are going to get into some historical background. For those of you who want to jump right onto the film reaction, go for it. But for those of you who want to stay, we're going to get right into it. Dr. Zhivago originated as the controversial novel of the same name written by Boris Pasternak. Pasternak drew from his own experiences in the Russian Revolution specifically between him and his mistress, Miss Olga Ivan... Ivinskaya? Ivinskaya? Ivinskaya. That's what I'm going to call her. The novel would later be banned in his home country of the Soviet Union for being, quote, a vehicle for hatred of socialism, end quote. Despite the controversy in the Soviet Union, his novel would be secretly translated into 18 different languages and published all over the world. Pasternak would later be nominated for the Nobel Prize for his works, but would still be deemed a traitor to his home country. There's actually a kind of a weird story about this. So he wasn't actually there to receive the Nobel Prize. It was still awarded to him, but he didn't go because the Soviet Union essentially bullied him into not going, which I thought was kind of messed up. In 1963, the film rights for Dr. Zhivago were purchased by Italian producer Carlo Ponti, which is kind of a tongue twister. My mouth wants to say Italian produso Carlo Ponti. <laughs> Ponti soon hired director David Lean to direct the project because he felt that Lean was well-versed in the larger epic-styled films, such as Lawrence of Arabia, which, if you are wondering, we have reacted to on the channel. Once you finish this two-parter, head on over to that two-parter because it was a fantastic film. I linked the video up above. Go check it out. Dr. Zhivago would later be nominated for 10 Oscars at the 38th Academy Awards, including Best Picture. However, it didn't win for Best picture of that year. Instead, it won for five others, including cinematography and music. All right, guys, on to some interesting facts. Casting for Dr. Zhivago was actually a really interesting story. Originally, MGM execs wanted bigger actors to play the leading roles. So they were looking at actors such as Paul Newman to play Dr. Zhivago and Sophia, Sophia, and Sophia Loren as his love interest, which actually, fun fact, Sophia Loren was actually married to Carlo Ponti at the time of this project. Lean, however, However, looked at Peter O'Toole for the titular lead role. He had worked obviously with O'Toole on Lawrence of Arabia. He felt comfortable working with him and that's why he approached him. Why am I wearing a sweater in the freaking middle of spring in, in Arizona? I, I don't know what I'm doing with myself. So I had to change my shirt, okay? That's why I'm wearing a different outfit. We're gonna get back to this. <laughs> O'Toole, however, was not keen on the idea of working yet again in harsh climate conditions. He was subject to working in the hot desert, obviously for Lawrence of Arabia, and just did not want to live that life. Um, so he respectfully declined the offer. Lean looked to another actor whom he had worked with previously on Lawrence of Arabia and who had recently risen to stardom, Omar Sharif. Now this casting decision came as a shock to everyone, including Sharif, who originally was interested in the role of Pasha. So Dr. Zhivago would end up taking two years to create and would rack up $14 million, which was twice as much as the agreed upon amount. David Lean was adamant about wanting to film in the correct seasonal time periods. Is that what you would say? In the correct seasons, I'm being so extra. <laughs> but unfortunately in Spain that year, which was their principal filming location, they were having one of their sparsest winters. Given that Lean had already racked up $2.5 million in filming delays, he reluctantly agreed to film regardless of seasonal conditions. This means that many of the winter shots were actually filmed in temperatures as high as 116 degrees, which is crazy. Finally, after 50 years, Dr. Zhivago was 
allowed back into Russia to be published in its novel version and shown in its film version. With that being said, I am so excited to begin this epic journey of Dr. Zhivago. But before we do, guys, y'all know the deal. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification to stay in the loop. All right, everyone, it is time to grab your snacks, grab your drinks, get cozy, and let's get in to Dr. Zhivago. Dr. Zhivago, love the, uh, the font here. It's very funky, playful. Oh no, I'm, I already know I'm gonna fall in love with this score. I can hear notes that speak to my soul. It feels kind of dystopic, I'm not gonna lie. What is your interest in this girl, Camry Joe? She may be my brother's child. She's also Lara's child, the Lara. I like this shot here, how it's kind of cloaked in darkness. It really sets this very imperialistic tone. I'm General Yevgrav Andreevich Zhivago. The person I'm looking for would be my niece. Do you remember your father? No. Do you remember your mother? What was her name? Mummy. Mummy. <laughs> That's cute. I feel like she's not going to give any information. The person I'm looking for would be this man's daughter. This would be her mother. Did anybody ever call your mother Lara? I don't think so. I'm not your niece, Comrade General. No, nope, rings no bells to me. <laughs> mm, I feel like she knows more than she's letting on. He lost his mother at about the same age you were. Oh man, that must be so hard, especially as a child. Oh, and they're just lowering her, lowering her just like open like that. Wow. It's gotta be so rough. Oh, that's her inside the casket. Oh boy. Okay, so I read that Yuri is actually, in real life, Omar Sharif's son, which is really cool. I just wanted to throw that out there. Your mommy and I were great, great friends, you know. We are going to look after you. That's mother's. It's yours now. Mother could play it. I feel like his voice doesn't match how young he looks. Like, he looks like a baby. Maybe he just has a baby face. Say goodnight to Yuri, Tanya. He's your brother now. Good night. That's the only thing left he has of his, of his mother's. This instrument is the same instrument that they used in The Third Man, right? I don't know what it's called. You guys told me in the comments, but I forgot. But it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. He made his reputation as a poet while he was studying to be a doctor. What'll you do next year, Chicago? I thought of doing general practice. He wants to see life. There's Omar Sharif! <laughs> I love him, I'm sorry. I just think he's so good. He's such a good actor. What's your name? Antipov. Pasha, he's my brother. Well, take him home, miss, before he gets into trouble. So Omar Sharif was trying to go for that role right there, and he ended up getting the lead role. This is so cool. Are you a Bolshevik? No, they don't know right from wrong. Why did you tell him I was your brother? You could have told him I was your fiancé. Oh. Your fiancé? What? Monsieur Komarovsky has come to see my mother on business. Will you come? I've got exams to take, Pasha. I've got to get my scholarship. For a bunch of Russians, they're so British, and I love it so much. <laughs> There's a letter for you. She's coming home next month. Donya. Good evening, Larissa. You're reading. How dare you? Where'd you get this? Oh, it's the revolution paper. <laughs> I thought he was like, you're reading. Well, you're not to go to this peaceful demonstration. How old are you now? Seventeen, monsieur. Oh, please don't be creepy. He's like, you'd make an excellent bride for me. Weirdly enough, she kind of looks like the female version of Peter O'Toole. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? She kind of does, a little bit. 103. I think we'd better call it right off. You will take Lara, won't you, Victory? Very well. Get your coat. She's like, I don't want to go with that man. I don't want to go. Don't really like that man, whoever he was. Don't you think they're splendid? Yes, I do. My niece. Coat Lara. Charmant. Come, my dear. If you ask me what time period in terms of fashion that I love the most, I would have to say Russia in the late 1800s. This place must be dreadfully expensive, Monsieur Komarovsky. It is. That's really deep, bro. Basically calling for revolution. That's so empowering. They're all just quiet listening. <laughs> Lord. No doubt they'll sing in tune after the revolution. Ugh, I don't like him. I'm sorry. It's just interesting to see how there are different sides to every revolution, every war, and to see the different perspectives is very interesting. Are they playing the music louder? Maybe my, maybe my computer's just too loud. Oh. Oh, she looks like she's scared. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. I don't like the forcefulness of that. 
Oh, she looked like she did not reciprocate that kiss at all. Poor baby. Oh my gosh, they have the cavalry ready to fight against these revolutionists. I hear the fanfare coming down the way. <laughs> I like how the conductor is walking and conducting the band. That takes skill. Honestly, it really does. And he's eagerly watching. Look, he's like sad. Oh my god. I'm sad too, baby. Get out of there, Pasha. What's what? Oh my god. No, please don't. Not a child. Oh. Oh my gosh. Oh, they straight up kill people. Oh, dang. Set a fire in his heart ablaze. All these people will be taken care of. Get inside. I will not. Take him inside, sir, or I'll put him under arrest. Tug, Tug is coming home tomorrow. I like the fact that he is sort of, uh, he wasn't born into this high class society. He kind of was put into it from circumstances. So you kind of understand where his, his anger comes from after seeing this. Gives his character a lot of depth. Yuri! Dunya! I love the pink on her, it's cute. Aww. Daddy! And how interesting that, in terms of editing, Lean gave us the scene of like the horrific death of the revolutionists, and then the sweet tender moment of them reuniting with their daughter. I liked that contrast. I bought you this. It has a piece in it about young Russian poets. You're the best. They have their heads together. Amushka, stop it. <laughs> oh my god. And they're at a train station. David Lean and trains, right? Oh my god. I want to talk to you. It's important. <gasps> oh wow, he got sliced. They ruined his pretty face. Oh my god, they're dead meat now. You must go to a hospital. <gasps> Will you do something for me? Hide this. Throw it away. There will be no more peaceful demonstrations. I love that they emphasize her eyes. That, that specific lighting I, I've noticed a couple times now. You know what our Lord said to the woman taken in adultery. He said, go and sin no more. Flesh is not weak. Only the sacrament of marriage will contain it. Remember that. That's such an interesting viewpoint. Wow. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. I've been waiting nearly an hour, Victor. Ew, no. You've grown up a lot, haven't you? Yes. yes, but I'm still 17, which is underage. I know, guys, different time period, different rules. Now I get it. Sante. Sante. Up, 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 up. Poor thing. Oh my god, ew. Ew. Oh, this guy is so disgusting! Ugh, ugh. I feel like I want to wipe my lips. Where did you tell her we were going? Your mama. She didn't ask. That's because she knows. No, she doesn't. Oh, I'm going now, Victor. Stay, darling. No! You're gross! Don't touch me! Ugh! Oh, are we doing things? I thought things were happening. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Is she giving birth? Oh, I love the movement of this camera. Makes it feel like it's a single shot and he has the camera situated in the exterior. Love it. You take this Professor Boris Kurt and you find him. Maybe she's sick? I don't know. This is genius. Really, I thought it was Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff! Oh my god! That Was that like paying a little homage to Brief Encounter? Because if it was, I am so here for it. How do you like the idea of marrying a general practitioner? No general practitioner's asked me. Don't you fancy a professor of pathology? Does he write poetry? <laughs> you ask no. Then I'm afraid it's out of the question. They're like smitten with each other. That's cute. But there's something about that relationship that just feels safe, you know? How would the poet like to see a bit of general practice? What happened? Please tell me what happened. What happened to her? I'm like, I'm nervous. What did he do to her? They're not showing us who it is. Oh! You know what it was? Where the devil didn't you get a local doctor? I couldn't. No, I suppose you couldn't. They are purposely not showing who it is. Or maybe I just missed whatever they were trying, whoever they said it was. Not sure, eh? Come on, dear. Up you come. Oh, they're pumping her stomach. She gonna live. She is, isn't she? Yes. There's a child in the case, a child, her daughter. Oh, that's the mother. Okay, I'm sorry. Those last couple scenes were really quick edits. So I, don't, I didn't know who it was. Just making sure. It's like, he sees me. I feel like already, Doc, like, Zhivago is very passionate about, you know, what his, what his interests are. And I think that Sharif really highlights that. We haven't seen him in a lot of, um, scenes yet but so far i already think that this was 
Such a fantastic casting decision. What's the name of your assistant? Jeff Argo. Do you know him? No, I knew his father. He executed my father's will. He's had a bad scare tonight. I'm a little confused as to what happened. I, did she, like, take some, like, bad medicine or too many dosages? Because it looked like they had to pump her stomach. I went to the hospital again. In? She wants you to go and forgive her for her suspicions. Is this him? Yes. He knows nothing about... No! Nothing about what? What? Did I miss something? There's something that I must have missed. Pasha, this is Monsieur Komarovsky. I hope you don't think this is impertinent. I have advised Larissa's mother for many years. I am committed to the revolution. Please tell me, why does he look so much better with that scar on his face? Pasha, stop. <laughs> oh, he does not like that. Your political views do not concern me. How do you propose to live? I've been offered a teaching post. Will your salary be adequate? Adequate, not more. The actor who plays Pasha sounds like Rupert Friend. Do people improve with age? They grow a little more tolerant. I'm 26. I am familiar with things that you can hardly guess at. He's like, try me, baby. I'm freaking more intelligent than you think I am, sir. There are two kinds of men, and only two. He is the kind of man who breeds unhappiness. There's another kind. Not pure, but alive. <laughs> For you to marry that boy would be a disaster. You, my dear, are a slut. <gasps> I am not. We'll see. <laughs> oh my god, this is not happening right now. I knew he was disgusting! <laughs> and don't delude yourself, this was rape. That would flatter us both. What a disgusting human being. Disgusting. I like how she looked at the camera there for a second. Like, just because he can't have her? Like, what the f- What the f- You know? Oh my god! Lara, we had an appointment this evening, Lara. Where are you going? I left a letter. Lara, what's in this letter? What's in this letter? Don't! How do you even begin to approach that conversation? I, I don't even know. I have a very delightful announcement to make. Dr. Zhivago is betrothed in marriage to... <laughs> oh. oh my god, did she shoot him? What? No, she didn't. She shot him. <laughs> Let her go. You know what? In this circumstance, I'm not mad at her at all. Not even a little bit. Our destinies seem to be interwoven, don't they? What happens to a girl like that when a man like you has finished with her? I give it to you. Wedding present. What a freaking... I don't even know what to call this man. Is he even human? Ugh. It was a war between the Allies and Germany, and which of them won was a matter of indifference. Oh, she's... Oh, she had a baby. Wow. The the time here is like, it's moving. It's really moving. There were men with better motives, unhappy with their wives. Happy men don't volunteer. Come on, comrades. Oh, I think Pasha's gonna die. <sighs> yep, what did I say? I saw it. I saw it coming. Is there anything happy in this film, or is it all just sadness and loss and pain? Placements. And be ready for them. I feel for her character so much more now. I wish I knew more of Russian history to kind of understand the, the dilemma here, because I, I don't think I understand. <laughs> Ten miles up that road are the Germans! You let them in! <laughs> and that is the worst time for that to happen. Oh dang, he shot him dead. Oh! Taking a hole! Wow, that crowd literally oh okay we are we are literally okay wow that crowd just like swallowed him whole and just ended it right there jeez he looks so good in that uniform i love that wide are you a nurse that wide shot yes then help me i feel like even though this is the early 60s you still feel like people were just ready for something new in cinema i think I'm not a trained nurse, I'm a volunteer. Why did you volunteer? To find my husband. Oh, baby. Have you ever seen an operation? Your husband's yes. dead. Is that his face? Oh, poor thing. I could not, I could not be a doctor. Mm -mm. Ugh, like surgery? <laughs> you know, you often look at me as though you knew me. I have seen you. Four years ago, Christmas Eve. Did you know Victor Komarovsky? Good man to shoot at. Yeah, he's a, he's a terrible, terrible character. And... Poorly named, might I add. Victor? There's no victory in you, sir. You're disgusting. Zars in prison. Lenin's in Moscow. Civil war has started. Oh, jeez. No more Zars, no more masters. How about that? And I'm assuming that is Tsar Nicholas? It's so cool to see this perspective. This is so different, and I like it. Oh, man, you are have some work cut out for you, pal. I can't 
deal with this. You'll have to try, friend. If you could see how hard we have been working here, I feel sure you would forgive me. I forgot he was married, y'all. Oh my god, I completely forgot. Larissa Antipova is still here, and I admire her more and more. She often does the wrong things, but it always seems to work out right. She's like, wait a second, I don't like that. I feel like you can't get mad at his wife because she's so gentle, you know? In a couple of weeks, you'll be with your little girl. I want to be with Katia more than anything in the world. If only there was someone to look after you. If there were, I'd be destroyed by jealousy. Chibago, don't. They're falling in love. Why is he so shadowed? I kind of love that. We've been together six months. We've not done anything you'll have to lie about, Tonya. I don't want you to have to lie about me. You understand that, Yuri? Why is he in the shadows like that? And why do I love it? <laughs> Look at his eyes. His eyes say everything. I'll never forget your honor. Goodbye, Shivago. <gasps> Look, his eyes change with her. Look at the way she's looking at him. Oh my god. Their chemistry is like chef's kiss. <laughs> Look, he's crying. Don't cry. You're going to make me cry. Have we even talked about the score at all yet? Look at the sunflowers. How gorgeous. The color contrast and the symbolism of, of the sunflowers withering. It's like symbolizing his feeling in that, in that moment that he's lost something beautiful, you know? Oh, I love it. There he is. <gasps> Yuri! Oh. Yuri? This is Comrade Yelkin. He lives here. Are these the Bolshe Bolsheviks? Ugh, the tone just immediately changed. Yes, of course. You're discharged papers. Holy Cross. Holy Cross Hospital, it's on. The second reformed hospital. Oh, good. It needed reforming. <laughs> Came home to a very different Soviet Union, is that what it's called? Or Russia? Is it good to be home? Oh. Oh, that's his baby. Sasha. Oh! Sasha! <laughs> I wish you would slap me when I come right home. Ooh, naughty boy. That was very good, Tonya. Did you write any poetry? Quite a lot. Is it good? I think so. Can I see it? Well, of course. I feel like I'm falling in love with Omar Sharif all over again in this film. <laughs> There's something so tender about him. I don't know what it is, but he's just so sweet. What happened to Nurse Antipova? She's gone home to her little girl. Oh, we shan't see her then. No. <gasps> Oh my god, he looks like he's on his deathbed. Whoever is the makeup artist on this is 100% right now. That was the first time I ever saw my brother, and I knew that I would disobey the party. Perhaps it was the tie of blood between us, but I doubt it, nor was it admiration. I love that Alec Guinness is kind of like an outsider kind of looking in. He's giving us his perspective of the story. I think that's kind of cool. What's going on? What you doing with my things? Just a minute. That's the last thing his mother go oh, shoot. That would be firewood. Oh man. I told them who I was. He told me what he thought about the party. He was walking about with a noose around his neck. I can't approve this evening something you may do tomorrow. It's like we're hearing Alec Guinness's character's inter monologue, but we're still in the scene. Very cool the way that he set that up. They couldn't survive what was coming in the city. I urged them to leave and live obscurely somewhere in the country. He didn't resist. I do love the dystopian undertones of this film. 50 person! Tonya! Yes! 50 person only! <gasps> Got his whole family on the train. Praise God. Oh my God. Your train will leave tomorrow morning. Health regulations for the journey. This is disinfectant. Use it. <laughs> and this wagon is a detachment of voluntary labor. Liar. Liar. Why is he so intense? <laughs> the criminals have been completely routed in that area under the command of People's Commander Strelnikov. Long live the revolution! Long live anarchy! I feel like he's one of those, he's gonna get himself in trouble. They're gonna make us fall in love with this character and then they're gonna kill him. Hey, whoa, you can't do that. It's way too public, bro. Oh, he's just kissing his wife. They have each other. Oh, something's paining him. He's lost someone. Like, he's been through some stuff. <laughs> Wow, houses have been burned. <gasps> and horses are dead. Oh my gosh. Help me, brothers. At least take the baby. Oh my god, grab his hand, grab his hand. Ah! Come on. Yuri, the child is dead. The child is dead. Wow. It's terrifying. Oh, they got her. Who did it, comrade? Strelnikov. I expect you were lying. Commander Strelnikov is a great man. The Ural. That's where we're going, darling. Will there be wolves in the forest? They 
definitely dubbed over these children. There's no way that that voice is coming from that little baby boy. Yes, that's Strelnikov. <gasps> is that Pasha? What? I thought he was dead. Oh no. Well, I'm happy he's alive. Oh, and it's just intermission like that? <laughs> Wow, okay, well, we'll stop here for now. Wow, that was a very interesting first half of this film. Um, yeah, I don't even know. I feel like I have to continue watching to really give you the full, like, dissection of it. But so far, I really like... I just, I'm a fan of David Lean in general, and I think that he's just... He's taken this project, and he's really made it his own, Especially with incorporating all of the trains. Yeah, it just, it feels like a David Lean. So I'll leave it there. I'm not going to go too much into de detail because I want to watch the whole film. Um, but yes, so stay tuned, guys. We will be watching part two in the next video. Thank you so much for watching it with me. All right, everyone, that does it for this video. As always, if you liked it as much as I did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to become an official Tiffany Club member, then I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification to stay in the loop. If you would like to see this film's full reaction, you will find it on my Patreon, as well as our Flick Pick polls, which allow you to vote for future videos, and our MWM live streams, where we come together every other week as the Tiffany Clubbers that we are, and we watch one classic film live via Zoom. If that sounds like something that interests you, then I highly encourage you to check out that Patreon link, which is in the description box below. In the next video, we are watching part two of Dr. Zhivago. I am very excited to check that out with all of you guys. If you want your own copy of Dr. Zhivago, I have provided links of where I bought my physical copy, or if you just want to watch it in its entirety, I also linked down below where you can stream it online. Today's question of the day comes from Paul Peacock. Paul says, as a devotee of classic Hollywood films, is your circle of family members and friends starting to be converted or think that you're nuts? <laughs> um, I think that's hilarious. You know, I feel like I've reached through to some of my family members. I do have um, some younger siblings, so I think that they're kind of more hooked on the modern cinema. But specifically with my mom, uh, we really do talk a lot about classic films and just old Hollywood in general. And I think I've kind of started to latch onto her a little bit and get her more interested in classic films. Hopefully I'm getting through to her. I'll try with my other family members. But yeah, that is that. Hopefully that answers your question, Paul. If you have a burning question that you would like to ask me, please do so in the comment box below. And I might just pick one of your questions and feature it in a video and give you a little shout out at the end. If you have a recommendation for any classic Hollywood films, head on over to my website, www.miatiffany.com. Scroll all the way down and you will find our recommendation form. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at Mamma Mia Tiffany. Guys, please stay safe and healthy out there and I will see all of you in the next video. Bye everyone. Have some gray hairs because uh, I'm getting older. <laughs> Believe it or not, I found like 10 gray hairs in my hair today. Can you believe it? 10 whole gray hairs. Guys, I'm only 23 turning 24 this year, okay? How do I already have grays? <laughs> I kept, I forgot to say part one. <laughs> okay, one more time. I'm being cold. Hello? I'm like, like the camera is literally rolling right now. <laughs> His novel was secretly translated into 18 diff, translated. Yeah, I said it right. Ah! <laughs> it's hard when you're trying to memorize on the fly. Okay, Pasternak would eventually be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Nobel Prize. Ah. Pasternak would eventually be... Pff, sorry. Pasternak would later be... N pff, one more time. Pasternak would... <laughs> Stop. Oh my gosh. Costume change. I need a costume change. <laughs> oh my god.